So welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, today we are taking a very casual look at Ubuntu Deep In Edition, Ubuntu Deep In Desktop Edition, Ubuntu Deep In Respin. Anyway, the point being that there is a new respin, yet another respin of Ubuntu out in the wild, and uh, I want to do two things in this video. First of all, I want to obviously look at what Ubuntu Deep In contributes to the the desktop Linux space because I do love the deep in desktop environment, or at least I think it's very interesting and it has a lot of potential. Uh, on the flip side, I also want to use this video as a bit of a discussion point about, by golly boy howdy, do we have too many uh, Ubuntu respins? It's my own hot take and I'm going to vent a little bit about it in this video. So let's jump aboard. We'll see what we can accomplish in today's video. Now what I do want to say out of the gate is that I'm definitely not here to hate on any particular project. It's definitely not my style. And if you love the deep in desktop environment and you don't want to use the deep in uh, operating system and you know, it's, it's associated uh, technologies, then the Ubuntu deep in respin is like a fantastic option for you. Based on LTS, it seems to be getting some regular updates and uh, that's great. Now, if you're not familiar with deep in, then I definitely suggest you pause now and go and watch uh, another video about what the deep in desktop is because that's not what this video is what this video is is just a casual noodle around also some casual comments about the state of ubuntu respins in uh, mid 2020 because here's my theory i think that when ubuntu has a long-term support release in our case 2004 uh all of the respins come running in that uh People that have a particular passion project see an LTS release as a fantastic opportunity to put it out there in the wild uh, because they have a stable base that's going to be supported for five years. This deluge of Ubuntu respins, in my head, uh, it does it does get a little bit uh, it does get a little bit old in, in my opinion. And not that I don't want to see people try new things with uh, with desktop Linux, but uh, at the same time. This provides a, a perfect environment for us to continue forever distro hopping and distro switching. What I mean by that is that every time there's a new respin that comes along, whether it is the Ubuntu desktop environment respin or whether it is uh, some of the, the new ones that have come out uh, with the Ubuntu Unity respin uh, that spun up recently using Unity 7, which I'm a big fan of Unity 7. I guess the thing that I that I wonder is that with all of these amazing projects spinning up, I do worry about the life cycle of these particular projects. Uh, now, I guess the great thing about open source is that we can uh, take things and change things and, and morph things and evolve things however we like, and those things come and go. But I do worry about anyone who gets particularly invested or attached to a particular project like this where... Uh, these are the kinds of projects that are usually done very much in the spare time or in the free time of uh, of uh, enthusiasts and of developers who just want to contribute something. Uh, I don't know. I'm, I really have split opinions about this. Okay, let's talk about deep in for a second. I'll pause my brain on that one and I'll come back to it. Uh, now, some of the things that are unique about deep in is that about the Ubuntu deep in respin is that they do take the the latest stable deep in desktop. So it's not the absolute cutting edge, latest, greatest uh, v, uh, version 20 of the deep in desktop that we see teased in beta a lot. Um, it is just the standard 15 uh, point X series. So if you're already familiar with what deep in has as a desktop, then that's great. If not, it basically goes like this. You get a panel at the bottom, which can either emulate a dock-like experience centered here in the middle, and that's it, or you can extend this panel out and uh, and make it a more Windows-esque panel. Uh, now, for me personally, I think I tend to gravitate towards the more Windows-esque layout. You can also change the mode of the app launcher. By default, it is a full screen app launcher and you simply type away at the top there and you get filtered results. Uh, what I also tend to do is if you want a more Windows-ish experience, then you hit the little drop down and the little shrink button and then it shrinks it down to a little, uh, to a little kickoff kind of menu. Uh, so I do love Deepin as an environment. I think it, uh, when it doesn't have any of the visual effects turned on, it can be quite efficient. When it comes to system resource usage, it is pretty hefty, 
being based off a lot of GTK technologies with a little bit of extra um, spit and polish on top uh, makes for a very smooth and mostly minimalistic uh, sort of experience. But a lot of this in terms of the desktop shell is going to change in the next version, in the next major version of the Deepin desktop. Now, if you're not exactly sure what I'm talking about, Deepin version 20, which is, uh, I think, officially in beta at the moment, you can see that a lot of the major work that's going on to, uh, to re-skin or give a fresh coat of paint to a lot of this stuff is, uh, yeah, is pretty significant. This is not a minor upgrade by any stretch and it looks like they're gonna be making some interesting changes to the overall shell. Now, what this means, and I'll just use um, XPS Tech's great video here of what's coming new in Deep In version 20, is uh, a redesigned shell and taskbar and a bunch of new animated elements. And uh, it does, make me wonder about the longevity of a project like the uh, Ubuntu Deepin Remix. There's going to be some significant work coming up for the Deepin team and will that release cycle or release cadence coincide with what the uh, what Deepin's release cadence is in terms of uh, will Ubuntu Deepin 20.04 receive the same updates as deep in version 20. When it comes to what a lot of these respins bring to the table, for me personally, somebody that's been around desktop Linux and used it for quite a while, it, it, it often asks more questions than it does provide answers. Now, of course, if you wanted to run the deep in desktop environment and you didn't want to use the, uh, you didn't want to use deep in the distro itself, Ubuntu is kind of your only other option at this point. I know Manjaro used to have a community respin of Manjaro based on the Deepin environment, but I believe that's not the case anymore. So in Deepin's case, I think they might be justified in having a respin of Ubuntu out there in the wild. Where Deepin comes to shine as a shell is the fact that you can manage most of the settings and most of the tweaking that you want to do in the desktop shell itself without having to open up endless dialog windows. Now I know I've had laptop mode tools here for a while. I think this is just an interesting addition that, uh, that seems to be custom to Ubuntu Deepin. I certainly haven't seen it on any other Ubuntu respins uh, as of late. But, uh, but it just seems to have some interesting checkboxes here for common issues that, uh, that, uh, that laptops seem to have, so that's fine. I am noticing some wonky theming though, especially across uh, slightly older toolkits. The theme that they seem to enable for Deepin and a lot of the tools uh, that come custom with the Deepin desktop environment look really polished and they look excellent. You have a file manager and you have a handful of other custom deep in tools, things like screenshots, text editor, computer browser, calendar, and some other little bits and pieces. But the stuff that they have taken out are the things that potentially have caused some contention in the open source community about uh, privacy and that kind of thing. So for example, the deep in software store is not what's here. It is just the stock standard Ubuntu. Uh, software store, which obviously has um, snap packages there enabled by default. It's yeah, it's very much an Ubuntu respin. So whatever your expectations are about Ubuntu and the LTS release can be pretty much matched here in Ubuntu Deepin. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm torn. I don't really know how I feel about these uh, these respins. I love the fact that there is another option for those who want to run the uh, the Deepin desktop on Ubuntu and still live in the Ubuntu world. But I do wonder, how long is this project going to be around? Will its user base grow significantly to the point where it can uh, be adopted and be brought in as part of the official Ubuntu family? And at that point, I'm guessing that that'll require some significant uh, resources devoted to uh, yet another official uh, sibling of the Ubuntu desktop OS. Uh, and those resources, are, are they potentially taking away from the quality of others? And who gets to make those decisions? I'm not really sure. What I will say is that if you are in the mood for a beautiful, translucent, minimalistic desktop that runs on the Ubuntu that you are familiar with, then I, there's hardly any hesitation here. 
Just go out and get it and it'll be great. I look forward to seeing what happens with this project in the future. And I wish the team the very best in bringing the, the new features that come with Deep in version 20 when that drops uh, into this Ubuntu LTS. Ladies and gentlemen, are there any other respins that I need to check out? Or is it time for us to start looking at how to install desktop environments on the Linux OSs that we already know and love? Uh, I think for me, I personally am entrenched pretty deeply in Ubuntu land. Apt runs very deep in my soul and uh, as try as, I, as hard as I can, uh, it's very hard for me to get away from it. If I was to switch away from the Ubuntu world, I would probably be landing in either Fedora land or maybe even Solus. Um, those seem to be my uh, necks of the woods as it were. But funnily enough, just to wrap up in conclusion, I've had this particular install of Ubuntu 20.04 going since uh, since I think before it came out, since it was in beta. And it's it's been solid enough and good enough for me, and I guess I'm time poor enough that I haven't hopped around in, uh, in coming up on six months now. And for me, that's pretty significant. Let me know, what do you think about the state of Ubuntu respins in the comments below? Thank you so much for watching, and catch you all in the next one.